We're back for season two. Yes, it's bigger. It's badder. It's... I'll just get on with it. Bad scripts. Hello and welcome back to A Bad Scripts Presents The Last Resort. It's me here again, Steve Jones, and joining me as ever, Mr. Mike Garlia. Hi, Mike. Hello, Steve. The last few. A couple of episodes. This is the penultimate episode of season two and possibly of The Last Resort ever. Who knows? It could be. Penultimate. That's an interesting yeah. word. Penultimate. Mm-hmm. The last but ultimate. The ultimate being the final. The, the 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 one that cannot be su- succeeded or succeeded i don't know um because it's a weird thing a, a a penultimate episode isn't it I, over the years recently i've noticed penultimate episodes being more exciting than ultimate episodes than the, the finale um you know people talk about things like game of thrones and that was exciting and there's a bit of a damp squid um on the um on the, on the finale uh, what are your thoughts on penultimate episodes? Are they are they something that gets you excited, or is it? Uh, you still yeah, I know? think it's the is it well, it's the it's the final chance you've got to throw everything at it before the final episode, where you have to close off everything, isn't it? Is that you know if you're if you're talking end of series, end of production, you know, like Game of Thrones, for instance, that last episode was mainly them sitting around talking and agreeing what they're going to do, you know, but the one before it was the dragon lady going absolutely mental. But, (laughs) you know, I have noticed, I don't know if you've noticed this, and maybe it was the Sopranos that started this off. And that is, you throw everything into the penultimate and then leave the last one really ambiguous. Like it doesn't quite end. It just leaves it on a, what what happened there? You know, and if you remember the Sopranos, she, the, 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 the daughter's running into the cafe where they're all having dinner and then there's a loud noise and a bang or something, but it's leading up to something's going to happen. And, you know, interestingly, I, I I watched this show called Ozark. I've been following it throughout and it's just finished its fourth series and it ends in almost the same way, just really ambiguous. <laughs> no spoilers, but just, but not in a way that fulfilled me. I was like, oh, come on, like, please, just, get, I, I, there has to be a line drawn here. So what's your <laughs> view on that, on ambiguous end of shows, where there could be a movie, but there might not be a movie? What's your view on that? Yeah, it's frustrating, isn't it? As an audience member, you're kind of like, I want the payoff. I've invested all this time. I, I want some resolution, because there's nothing that drives me crazy more in a movie, especially, because you don't know if there's another one coming. You don't know if that will ever be resolved. And we've seen it in, in series that have ended. They've been cancelled. And that ambiguity and that, that cliffhanger, you, you never find out what really is going to happen. So, you know, bear, bear that we, we probably have to bear that in mind for next episode, which is the hour finale, that, that, you know, some people like it and some people don't. So maybe we just have to be very careful there. I think as long as you don't shortchange the audience and there is some form of closure... And mm-hmm. that's it, isn't it? There's closure that I can now move on rather than going, okay, so there could be something and there might not be, but okay. And we do move on generally, but like we said, but, you know, Sopranos is considered, and I don't think there's any spoilers, it's been out for a long time, but that that's considered one of the greatest TV shows ever made. But it was left in such a way. And of course, then the star passing away meant, well, we can't go forward with this. So um, they never yeah. did. And it's yeah. always left that discussion of, what do you think happened? And that's the point, isn't it? Well, that's the point they get to. That's the other side of it, isn't it? Does that stimulate more discussion and more interest and, you know, put things out there that people have their different ideas? And I think that's similar to, you know, when you read a book over seeing a movie, you have your own mental image of what's going on in that book. You have your own mental image of what that what the characters look like. It's how you, you interpret it versus how a director, producer interprets that when they make it into a movie so there's a difference there and i think that ambiguity lets you lets you you know summarize in your own thoughts how do i want that to end how do i feel that ended rather than it being 100 percent prescribed how things resolved oh steve i think you're you're talking about another series here you're talking about um Book to screen adaptions that we hate or love. <laughs> <You're always on laughs> Who, knows? <laughs> Who knows? Bad scripts may go forward. Okay, I suppose without further ado, really, we need to move on. We have some 
great uh, scenes, if I do say so ourselves, um, that are waiting for your ears. So without further ado, let's jump in. Interior, entertainment's office, day. Mark puts down the folder and rubs his temples. He closes the flap so the documents can't be seen. Wayne is perched on the side of the desk, a look of concern all over his face. In a word then, Wayne, shitstorm. Hurricane level. In all my years here, I have never seen anything like this. She's made some pretty wild accusations in here. Mark taps the folder. So what do we do? Mark sighs and thinks for a second. Well, the good news is that by literally recording all of this, she's pretty much incriminated herself. I mean, she's confessed to mismanagement, bullying, fabrication, lying, framing, <laughs> sexual harassment, blackmail. Look, that's what I can't understand about this. I mean, why would she admit to so much wrongdoing by way of recording everyone else's misdemeanours? I guess she never thought anyone would see this. I mean, but it, it, she's used it to blackmail the others. Uh, either way, this needs to be dealt with, Wayne. All this happening under our very noses, it's not good. But how? Well, simply, she would need to admit that this document is hers, that she wrote it, and there is more than enough to fire her here. She's getting off lightly there. Or the other way is to take this to Alan. He would need to get HR involved and and that would, you know, it start an investigation. I think we should throw the whole goddamn book at her. You realise what you're saying, Wayne? She's incriminated you quite severely in this. She's recorded on several occasions that you have been less than professional and accused you of sexual harassment and stalking. If we do this, we have to investigate every claim in here, including you and the camp coach she's been sleeping with. I know. I mean, between us, how much of this is true? What she's written about you? Uh, a lot of it, Mark, but it wasn't really like that. Wayne, come on. What were you thinking? I thought we were in a relationship, all right? I had no idea she was sleeping with one of the coats as well. They both go quiet before Mark looks at Wayne. Look, no one knows we've seen this, right? We can delete the files. I'll speak to Kelly about our behaviour and we just won't renew a contract next year. The problem then solves itself. Finished at the end of the season. I'm sorry, Mark. I don't think we can do that. I can't ask you to compromise your principles like that. No. Neither do I. You know what this will mean, Wayne. I know. And I've already thought it through. Wayne steps forward and places an envelope on the desk. Mark follows it down and looks back at Wayne. I've loved every minute of being here at camp. I mean, I grew up here. Wacky Wayne was born here. Thanks, Mark, for being a great mentor, boss and mate over the years. You don't have to do this, Wayne. It's done, Mark, as you well know. So what will you do next? I don't know. I think I might give the cruisers a go, you know, see the world a bit. This place won't be the same without you. Oh, I know that. Wayne shakes Mark's hand and they have a moment. Stay in touch, won't you? <laughs> Try and stop me, mate. <laughs> I'm not your mate. I'm your friend. Wayne smiles and walks to the door. Just as Karen tries to get in, Wayne unlocks it, smiles at her and walks right past. That's all sorted backstage. Great, thanks, Karen. I've got Wayne Asani. Where's he off to? He's gone. Oh, for a walk. Right you are. Can I do anything else for you before I have my tea? Yeah. As a matter of fact, you can. 
Call Kelly in for me, please, Karen. Karen picks up the handset and cycles through her Rolodex, then loudly taps onto the phone. Mark takes the envelope and the file and puts them both in the top drawer of his desk. Do you want to unpack that a little bit, or should we wait? No, I think that needs unpacking. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne's left. Wayne's gone. Wait, well, has he? Has he gone already? Do we know if that's the end of his, his scene? I think that is. I think we do well, know. I think we, he's, 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 he's noticing. He's, he's made the decision to leave, hasn't he? That's the point. I think I think he probably made that a while ago after his performance in, in Judy's um, show saver. Um, I think it's reignited something in him. That's probably the reason he was so bitter and twisted throughout all of the first season. Um, he just missed performing. I think it's more on, look, you know, I think what Wayne has demonstrated is a bit of self-awareness that um, actually, you know, Kelly's got him dead to rights with what she's written. He's admitted it to Mark. He said, look, yeah, it's true. Um, but it wasn't like that from Wayne's perception. Mm. And he's fighting Kelly's perception and she could really say anything. So if he wants to throw the book at her, like, like he says in the scene, then Wayne's going to get investigated. And I think, you know, would you st- would you stay if you knew that that was going to uncover quite a lot that's going to mark your, you know, it's going to mark your reputation. And I, and I think that's it. He's he's taken the high road there, and he's he's gone, but he doesn't want her to continue to get away with it. So he's essentially throwing himself on the sword. Yeah, yeah, a, a little bit. I mean, it's deserved because you shouldn't behave the way he's behaved and what have you. But at least he's owning it now and moving forward. So you can only hope that. He grows as a person going forward, and when he does all of that, goes off and does maybe you know becomes a cruise director or something in the future. Well, let's I mean let's not you know over emotionalize it. Let's just say it for what it is here, right? And and if we go back to some of grain, uh, to some of grains, some of Wayne's moments. I was going to say Grace mm. moments, but I'm not sure they are. You know, <laughs> you know he he has a dalliance with Kelly at the end of season one. You know, um, we knew that Kelly was doing it to further a career. We he then does become intoxicated with her, and you know he he does proceed to try and court her, but he turns up at a chalet quite a few times. He he's in a chalet. If you forget what he did with her underwear, and he's done some questionable things over the season, which mm-hmm. has been lost because he's been going on for so long. That yeah. I just I have a duty here to remind <laughs> us what Wayne has been getting up to, and he yeah, has done you, some terrible things. If you feel an affection towards him, remember he's a dirty little pervert, and then... <laughs> he is. He's a hundred percent a pervert, and that's again he knows that, and I don't think he yeah. can lie. And I think he's using that as a, you know what, it's time for me to go, and I might as well just go now rather than putting myself through this situation of being investigated because they're going to find a lot, and who knows what else we haven't even mentioned about Wayne. Well, you know, exactly, so. this is only what we saw. We don't know what went on before or or since. So there we go. But he found his niche again. He found his performance, uh, his performing passion uh, with Wacky Wayne, and. I think like like anyone else, if if you, you know, he's he's got that degree of self-awareness to know I'm not going to come out of this well. It's time for me to leave. And, you know, how else do you finish that without laboriously going through a full end investigation? <laughs> well, this is it. Interior, Donna's caravan, day. Donna is stood in the kitchen making a sandwich with the radio playing Reach for the Stars by S Club 7. She's boogieing along and humming as she preps. Dan comes in and sees her. Not hearing him, he sneaks up to her and wraps his arms around her waist. She squeals in shock and then starts laughing as she turns and kisses him. Hey, stranger, where have you been? Just, you know, doing some thinking and that. Do you want a sandwich? No, I I had some earlier. Are you okay? Yeah, look, I'm sorry about what happened, yeah? I, I just needed some time to think about stuff. No, Dan, I'm sorry. I get it. And I put a lot on you. I shouldn't have done it like that. I just got a bit carried away with, you know, excitement about the future. I know, babe. Dan, I've been thinking too. I love you. I want a life with you, but... I won't push you into anything you don't want to do, okay? Ah, oh, thanks, babe. That, that means a lot, and I, I love you too. I was thinking as well, and, and look, I think I'm going to talk to your dad about that job. Donna looks at Dan, but the way he says it doesn't really convince her. She offers him back a smile and hugs him. 
Let's just see what happens, yeah? There's still some time to think about it. So when do you find out about the job? Oh, should be soon. I'm waiting on a call. But you think you'll get it? I don't know. Oh, I'm so nervous, though. I have no idea who else has gone for it. If you don't get it, do you still want to stay here? I'm not sure. I don't want to be a camp coat anymore. I think I've moved on from that. and I, I really couldn't bear another year with Kelly. What about you? I don't know. I guess I'm loving the DJ. And I, I mean, I could do another year here, but it'd be like the oldest. I'd be like the oldest coat on resort then. Oh, yeah. But the most handsome still. Dan smiles. What is it you're not saying, Dan? What do you mean? I'm just getting a weird vibe from you, that's all. Be honest, talk to me. Dan steps back and is about to speak when Donna's phone go, and she quickly, she quickly picks it up. I... Yeah. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I understand. No? No, no, it's not a problem. Thank you. Okay, then. Bye. Donna puts the phone back on the counter and goes silent. Dan looks at her expectantly. The silence for a few more moments. Well? I got it! You're looking at the new head of Kids Club! Donna squeals in delight and jumps into Dan, hugging him with a big smile on her face. We see Dan's face over Donna's shoulder. His smile slowly drains as Donna's eyes are no longer on him. Um, how does she jump into him? Does she literally jump into him? This into is why him, we, yeah. we, we have to read what we write, because it's yeah. only when you reread it. You it go, it well, probably should have said into his arms, into Dan's into arms. Into his arms, but, yeah. She jumps into jumps him. Into him. Yeah. <laughs> he right. smashes into a million pieces. He just <laughs> a blood splatter on the wall. <laughs> wow, that got dark quick. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's happy for her, but is he happy? I, I, I just don't know. It's one of those where you like... <sighs> He can stay now and do another year at least because he knows she's there. He says he's going to speak to her dad. So there's options there for him. So, you know, we'll just have to see what he chooses to do. Love conquers all in the end. <laughs> Interior entertainment's office night. Mark and Judy are sat at the desk side by side with Mushy sitting opposite. Kelly enters the room to hear silence. Or she turns to her and then back to Mark and Judy. That'll be all then, Richie. You can carry on with your duties now. Mushy stands up and walks past Kelly without saying a word. He closes the door behind them. Judy immediately gets up and follows him. Opening the door, she hangs a do not disturb sign before closing the door and making sure it's shut tight. Judy returns to her seat next to Mark. Have a seat, Kelly. Kelly walks over to the chair and sits down. Everything all right? Do you recognise these documents? Kelly quickly looks down to see Mark open the folder and spread out the papers and immediately looks away and folds her arms. I have no idea what they are. I think you should look again, closely. Sorry, Judy. I've not seen them before in my life. Kelly... It's in your best interest to be honest here, to talk to us. Ah, talk, you say? That's which coming from you two. What's that supposed to mean? Neither one of you have barely spoken a single word to me all year, and now you bring me for what looks like an interrogation. Ellie, look, this is pretty serious, and it's just us in this room. Now, can you please just answer the question? Where did you get them? So they are yours. I never said that. Are they yours or not? So what if they are? They're my private property, from my eyes only. You must be breaking some laws even having them. I put a password on it and everything. So these do belong to you. You did write them. Yes, it's my diary for the year and it's private but not when you write and say them on company computers, Kelly. Soon as you do that, it's our property. 
But that's not really the issue here. All right. So what is the problem? We just need to know. Is everything you've written in here true? It'd be really useful if you can help shine a light on what's been going on this year. Aye, down to the very last word, Mark. Well, if that's the case, it's pretty damning to be perfectly honest with you. No, right? You don't, you don't know the hard for what goes on around here. Clearly not. And you stand by these documents then? 100%. I'll go on record about some of the stuff that's happened here. I tried to run a tight ship, but you know, people always like to take the piss, don't they? Kelly is smiling smugly, her arms crossed. Mark and Judy exchange glances with each other. To start with, thank you for your honesty, Kelly. You're welcome. Let me finish. Given the context and evidence that you've now taken ownership of, we have no choice but to immediately suspend you, pending a full and thorough investigation. What? You're being relieved of your duties immediately. Why? Why? Are, are you joking? Recording accusations about everyone, you've also implicated yourself in some pretty immoral and unprofessional behaviours, Kelly. Bullying and sexual harassment to name but two. We're not standing for that here. Are you kidding me on? I've been the victim of that. Look at Wayne's one. I recorded the lot. Get him in here. Get him in here right now to answer to that. He hasn't left me alone all year, turning up at my chalet, begging me for sex all the time. You're throwing me under the bus to protect that waste of a loser. This isn't about Wayne. This is about you. Is it, I? Kelly, calm down. I'll no calm down. You bring me in here and make these accusations. I've worked my ass off for you this year. You two are only bother about looking good in front of the big bosses. You don't care about the courts. At least I do. But you don't. This folder shows that. You will put in place a mentor and support the camp coach, Kelly. Not scrutinise, bully and blackmail them. We've taken on board feedback about you. It's not good. Who? Mushy? Amongst others. Well, he's my boyfriend, so he can't say anything. Are you familiar with company policy that the management cannot fraternise with junior members of the team? It's a sackable offence on its own, if not declared. According to him, he's not in a relationship with you. He said you've been blackmailing him. Are you fucking kidding me? Didn't hear him complaining when we were sleeping together. There's no need to be crew, Kelly. You shut your mouth, Judy, before I do it for you. Kelly stands up, knocking her chair backwards. Both Mark and Judy stand as well. You think you got the upper hand? You dinner. I've got dirt on all your bunch of wankers. You should calm down. You should sit back down before I knock your falsies into the back of your face, bitch. Mark picks up the phone and dials security. Oh, look at that. The big man phoning for help from the wee Scottish lassie. Kelly dashes forward as Mark and Judy immediately take a step back. She doesn't lash out at them, but grabs the folder and all of the papers into her hand. Think you can use this against me? Kelly reaches into her pocket and pulls out a lighter, strikes it and sets a wad of paper on fire. As it takes hold, she throws it onto Mark's desk. The flames spill out, lighting up the entry and other bits of paper. Jesus, Kelly! Judy runs to the corner and grabs the fire extinguisher, activates it and brings spraying down the now fully engulfed desk. Kelly stands there smiling at her work. The fire alarm activates and the ringing fills the air. Judy gets control of the burning desk and puts out the last flame. That was just an accident. You're done here, Kelly. Get your things and go. Oh, you cannot fight at me, Mark. This place will fall apart, as you well know. You just did, you little slut. Now, get out. What you just say to me, old clam? Kelly, in anger, launches at Judy. Mark pushes her behind him, and as Kelly lands a blow on his shoulder, Mark takes a step back and doesn't retaliate. Kelly attempts again to get to Judy and lunges. 
she's suddenly lifted off the ground by a security team and dragged backwards, screaming and shouting. She's trying to get free from his grip. He lifts her off the floor and begins carrying her out of the office. Her screams can be heard as she's dragged down the corridor. You okay? Oh, I'm fine. What about you? Bloody hell. That girl can hit. Gotta admit that hurt. Come on. We'd better evacuate. Everyone will be outside now. Dun, dun, dun. Well done, sir. That was like... Do you know what that, that reminded me of? A particularly explosive episode to take the high road. <laughs> that was that was quite something. Um, I, that was I looked, exhausting. Yeah, I, I I know that feeling on those scenes when you are doing three different accents in one scene. It is it's really really tiring. And you know when people do voice acting normally, you record one at a time, don't you? And it's to, to go through and switch between those. I, I must applaud you, sir. So congratulations, well done on that I one. Need lie, I, I need to lie down after that. I'm going to be honest <laughs> with you. I really need to lie down. The, the, in the dark the pulsing room. in my head. The pulsing <laughs> in my head. Oh, God. Well, that is a blaze of glory, if ever I've seen it. Well, she That escalated quickly, didn't it? I mean, I, what was she thinking, setting light to the, the documents? Well, I, I think even going back before that, she's oh, she's absolutely going on the defensive as soon as she gets in there. She doesn't even know why why she's there and she's already attacking them from the get-go so i don't know whether she knew something or whether she's heard something but um she was straight in there with the accusations before judy and mark had even explained what was going on and then it just got worse and i mean i think that's pretty you know it does it you know things do tend to escalate really really quickly in those situations although albeit i've never seen anyone set a desk on fire before when they're (laughs) about to uh to lose their job yeah, but this is this is Kelly we're talking about, and we know just how fiery she is as a, as a person. And you know, unintended. What? Yeah, exactly. Quite literally. Um, and and how kind of is her resolute belief that well, there's nothing you can do about this because this is the way it is. So just get over it. I think she firmly believes she has enough dirt on everyone to um, to to protect herself, and that's really what she's been doing. She's been capturing all this stuff and. As we said, and as we've known all all the way throughout, incriminate yourself. And a big mistake was showing mushy. If she'd never shown mushy, no one would ever have known that document was there. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Exterior entertainment's office. Camp coats, entertainers, staff, and guests are all lined up outside the office, murmuring and unsure as to what has happened. We can now hear sirens in the distance. The doors fly open and the security guards come into view, carrying an hysterical Kelly out of the building. She's swearing and shouting, trying to scratch him to get free, kicking and screaming. He motions to another guard to help him, and both of them together put her on the floor and hold her in place. Kelly turns her head to see most of the camp coats looking back at her. Did you call the police? Yeah, they're on route. A few minutes, they said. Well, what are you lot looking at, eh? The camp coats and staff all move in to get a better look at Kelly lying subdued on the floor. Mark and Judy come out of the building, the alarm still ringing. Karen, has the roll call been done? Is everyone accounted for? Yes, Mark, everyone's here but Wayne. No, that's fine. Wayne's been accounted for. What happened, Mark? Mark doesn't answer, but walks over to the security guards. Has she calmed down yet? Do I look fucking calm to you? Let me up and we'll see how calm I really am, you twat. Don't worry, we've got her. She won't be going anywhere. Listen to me, Kelly. We don't ever want to see you back here. Not ever. We'll pack your stuff up and ship it to wherever you want, but you are not to come back on resort under any circumstances. If you do, we'll have you arrested for trespassing. As for what just happened, we won't hesitate to press charges. Leave and no further action will be taken. Charges? On what? Do your fucking worst, you loser. Mark walks away. That's right. Walk away, wee man. You pathetic, you. Kelly spots Mushy in the crowd. Richie! Richie, are you going to let them do this to me? Mushy takes a few steps back, away from Kelly. Oh, so that's how it is then, eh? Then are you worry? I'll get you back at some point. I'll get all of you back. A police car pulls up and two officers jump out. They take control of Kelly, lift her up and put her in handcuffs. They lead her to the back of the car. 
Calm as a bitch, right, Kelly? Kelly is unceremoniously bundled into the back of the police car as laughter and clapping erupts from the camp coats. It's the last thing Kelly sees, a throng of faces pointing and laughing at her. The fire alarm stops as the engines turn up. The crowd slowly begins to disperse. And she's out of there! She's Ooh. gone down like a blaze of glory. <laughs> wow. That yeah, she did, she did. That's but we didn't we wouldn't expect anything less or from Kelly. She's never gonna go quietly into the night, was she, under any circumstances? No. And um I'm hoping that's a surprise to to everyone about how she's how her downfall has come about. It was mm. very um well, it's been a very, it's been a slow burn. We'll use loads of fire puns on that one. Mm. I mean, it's been a slow burn because we've been building up yeah. to this point of, you know, justifying her exit in a way that would make sense for the character and being, yeah. you know, there's no redeeming quality about Kelly, unfortunately. And um, yeah, I just hope that people have enjoyed that. And literally half the resort has seen her lying on the floor in handcuffs, screaming and shouting like a lunatic. And, you know, the the fact that she was laughed out of the building that's what would have hurt her the most because she's all about her image as a as, as a tough girl as a, the power thing it's always about power with Kelly so for her to be so unceremoniously dispatched I think is like the worst possible way she could go yeah and that usually is the case isn't it if you look at all kind of leaders and and people especially in the public eye they it never ends well when they've you know been tyrannical or made bad decisions and policies led and managed badly it just never ends it never ends well it's you know you treat people the way that you would like to be treated yourself and unfortunately she's fallen way short of those standards and um i think she's gone the way she's gone now whether that's the end of kelly whether kelly will make a resurgence and a reappearance um we don't know, but she is a fiery person and who holds grudges. So I would expect some retaliation in the future. Who who knows what could happen? But I mean, that's just a point for speculation, isn't it? I mean, we don't know if there'll be any more. So the fact that she she would, I, I imagine she'd have it. She'd she'd have to lick her wounds for a while, but she'd be plotting how she would get revenge as a character. I would agree. I would, and I would be scared, like <laughs> literally. Mushy, Mushy's going to be putting restraining orders and all sorts in place because uh, <laughs> he's number one on her list. It would seem so, and and Wayne's nowhere to be seen. So I think, as you stated, he's probably he's gone. He's gone. He's away. Uh, he's unser- away. And, and again, it's more about him just disappearing into the night without fuss and and grandeur. It's just slipping out and doing something quite dignified, really, in in yeah. comparison to to Kelly's exit. And, and, you know, admitting his faults and, and, and owning it. Well, you know, um, that's a chat for the next episode when we talk about goodbyes and end of seasons and what happens there, um, because we are moving forward into our end of season kind of finale um, on two fronts, mm-hmm. one for the season end of camp and the other one for us finishing season two. Absolutely. And on that point, I guess that's where we can wrap up for today's episode it's flown by it's been a lot of fun i hope everyone out there has enjoyed it as much as we have and that the penultimate episode won't be won't make next week's a damp squib i'm sure we've still got plenty more of excitement to come um before we leave as always mike do you have some words of wisdom for us to take us into the next week and see us through till the next episode there is never smoke without fire and in kelly's case quite literally on that note thank you for joining us for a fantastic episode of the bad scripts podcast our penultimate one we will see you for the finale next time but till then from me and from mike goodbye bad scripts was written and performed by mike garlia and steve jones a beach time production 